Welcome to the Joy Score YouTube channel and welcome to the Dr. Joy podcast. Dr. Joy, nice to see you. Good morning. How are you doing? Beautiful. Beautiful. Steffi, how are you? Great. Excellent. You. Excellent. And Professor Metzger. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see everybody. So here is the topic for the day. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Uh-huh. Okay. How many times a day, Steffi, do you ask for help? Never. Never? No. You don't ask somebody to pass the saw or open a window or anything like that? Um, no, I don't. No? I will get frustrated and start slamming things that people know I need the help, but... <laughs> Dr. Joy, you ask for help every once in a while, right? I will say at least three times a day maybe more I absolutely agree with you <laughs> yeah so there was a study done uh, across eight cultures mm -hmm. from the UK and Poland to Ecuador and Ghana and guess what a new study found that people ask for help every how many minutes three Exactly right. Amazing. <laughs> People ask for help every three minutes. Really? Yes. Yes. People ask for help every three minutes, and they usually get the help that they need. Very rarely in all these cultures will somebody say, no, I can't help you. Amazing. And what's amazing is they won't say the word no. Wow. They'll give an explanation. I've got, I'm talking to somebody on the phone. I'm right in the middle of writing a research paper. But really, will people say no? no? There is an expectation that people will help people out. And this is something that we've talked about before on the podcast that. You know, it's great to help somebody out because it gives you a feeling of joy in yeah, your life. Yeah. Act of kindness. Exactly right. Actually, helping anyone is act of kindness. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, this research was done by a UCLA assistant professor and his co-authors. It was published earlier this year in Scientific Reports. And they looked at requests for help that occurred in everyday social interactions. Okay. Um, they were filmed um, during this, such as sharing a meal, having a conversation, or participating in an activity together, or playing a game, things like that. And so they observed 363 people from family homes to college campuses to uh, rural villages. Um, and what was different about this research was that they didn't only do Western cultures. They did other cultures as well. Um, and so they found out that asking for help is quite common. And as Steffi um, guessed correctly, people ask for help every two to three minutes. Wow. So... <laughs> but but you're you're the outlier to that. Yeah. I'm just easy to do things myself. Sorry. I yeah. think yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Dr. Joy, any comment on this? Yeah, this and is, its relationship to joy? You know, uh now whenever I'm asked for help, I do or I try my best to help instead of saying no. And again, is somehow I learned early on in my life that helping or any act of kindness is how you earn blessings. <laughs> so it's kind of a way of uh, banking the blessings. Is this something that you learned by watching your parents? Uh, actually, my parents are the ones who taught me that. To be kind and helpful. And uh, 
one thing that I kind of uh, uh, learned early on, which was that what goes around comes around. So if you're not kind to others, you can't expect kindness. And if you're not helping others, you can't expect help. So it's going back to what goes around comes around, you know. Yes. And it's so true. I, I believe in it. Yeah. If you're going to do bad things to people, bad things are going to come to you. I do have to add that I do help people. I just don't ask for help. I just had to add. So, so what, sort of, what sort of things do they ask you to help with? Um, I can kind of like... I don't, they don't, people don't really ask me to help, but if I see somebody coming for the elevator, I'll always hold it. And we have a key, you have to put the key in to get to the floors. So I'll, like, if they have their hands full, I'll hit their floor for them. I mean, I know there have been times, like, when I've been in the grocery store and I'll see somebody struggling with, like, a case of water. Yeah. And I'll go and help yeah, them. Yeah. Or if they're trying to put it into their car, I'll get the case of water and yeah. put it in there for them. No. So, I mean, so a lot of times there's also a nonverbal um, right. helping mechanism yeah. that's yeah. going yeah. on it's also. Kind of things which are obvious. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So these researchers, um, they indicated that people needed in the in the video that they shot that people needed um, help eleven hundred times, one thousand one hundred times. They uh, people were accommodating of requests every, every day. That they every shot? day. Oh, really? Every day, yeah. um, and people are three times more likely to help than ignore or deny. A request, um, yeah. So it seems like the the world is not as bad as we think it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. People are not that bad. Yeah. 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 Um, research also found that people were equally likely to help family as well as non-family. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is a good thing. Within your family. People outside of your family. Right. So just like my my grocery store right, right, right. Uh, anecdote. Um, yeah. They, so they say that like if you're like kind of having a crisis in public and you kind of just yelling for help, I don't know like if this is in your research, but they say that people are more likely to help if you directly ask one person. So um, rather than asking the group as a whole, people will think somebody else will help. But well, that's exactly yeah. right. Yes. So yeah. You ask someone in particular. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Say, hey! Yeah, somebody help me. Like, please, you help me. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, here's one interesting thing about cultural differences, okay? People who spoke English or Italian were more likely to respond verbally when complying with the rest. I don't know what to make of that. I mean, they, they studied all different cultures and things like that. But if you were, if you spoke English or Italian, you were more likely to respond verbally. Okay. So that is something, uh, you're saying respond verbally. Yes. And so that by that, I mean, you know, in, a, in an affirmative, acknowledge and, and, and yes. Yeah. So that's interesting. Only English and Italian. And Italian. Well, I know French are generally pretty arrogant, so. <laughs> In fact, I experienced that every time I, I visited France, you know, I realized that people are unwilling to help, you know. And sometimes you realize the person you're talking to knows English, but pretend doesn't know English. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Another um, another item that uh, the research found out was, as I mentioned before, um, we usually give an explanation when we can't help. So it wasn't just a simple uh, no response. There was always something, um, sorry, my hands right. are full, sorry. Um, yeah. Right, right. And, and, um, um, you know, acknowledging is the big part of uh, help. Yeah. Sometimes, even 
even if you can't, but if you can explain why you can, it it helps in a way. <laughs> I I would imagine, although I I didn't really see it in the research, but uh, I would imagine that people would get a no response um, if they might be asking somebody for a sum of money, for right. example. Something like that would probably elicit uh, a no, no response or then a, a helping out type of response. Yeah, other types of help. Right. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. So uh, the research uh, suggests that across cultures, there's it, it's, it's the norm to help, okay. which is something that they hadn't seen because they, a previous research had only studied Western culture, okay. but when they studied other different cultures, even in those other cultures, same. the same thing. Okay. It was the normative was. To the eight uh, cultures they started with, they were half Western and half others, right? Mixed. Uh, they studied eight cultures from the United Kingdom and Poland to Ecuador and Ghana. Okay. So these were mixed. Uh, yes, okay. definitely. Definitely. Um, what else came out interesting? Um, so the, 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 the final part of the research shows that um, how interdependent humans are. Oh. We do. Was, yes, yeah. we depend on each other. Yeah. Just like we hope people will depend on Joy Score if they're having um, yeah. issues, things like that. But I think you know, kindness is a is a big big part. So it's uh, like um, kindness, help, doing things for others. Um, so this is very really interesting because when I think about this and it kind of dawned on me as I was listening to you that uh, years ago I started this idea of uh, counting my blessings every day. Not at the end of the day bitch and moan about things which didn't go right, but just acknowledge what went well, you know, what were the blessings of the day. And from there it led me to uh, develop a habit of helping or at least doing three things every day uh, of kindness act of kindness which helps others and no expectations from helping someone like uh, I always have a blanket in my car that I may give it to a homeless you know if I find a need you know but I don't expect anything at the time I just, I just do it the girls uh, and the kids at the Belmont front, you know, I, I go to Starbucks and say, can I get you something, you know, and I'll get them whatever they want. So the point is that it somehow has been in my heart that if you do good things to others, good things will happen to you. It's just the law of nature. If you do bad things to us, <laughs> bad things would happen to you. So that kind of made me feel that it's my responsibility to help and do acts of kindness. Now, moving on from that, I realized financially years ago, more than 20 years ago, I realized that I had accomplished enough. And when I broke my leg, even though I was making a lot of money, I decided I don't want to make any more money because what am I going to do with it? You can't take it with you. And uh, I had uh, my tibia in six pieces lying in the hospital and still thinking about all the money that uh, I'm in the process of making projects, companies, and all that. And so this is insanity, you know. Uh, so anyway, that was the best thing happening life when I broke my leg, you know, kind of woke me up. So from that point to now, uh, 
I don't know if I talked about the foundation that I have created now, which is a charitable foundation called Humanity, which supports uh, Ronald McDonald House, Precious Land, Long Beach Rescue Mission, and there's an organization which uh, serves two million hot, fresh meals every day mm. to school children. So those are my organizations of passion. So I pledge 51% of everything I have, the projects I have, all to this foundation. And now I feel that I have accomplished my goal. <laughs> because I don't worry about myself anymore. Right. I'm always thinking about my foundation. How can I make money for them, you know, and support these organizations? You know, that's my goal. I think one thing that people should remember is every little act of kindness that you do, every little time when somebody asks you for help, it kind of um, builds up over time and it helps to build um, a reputation, if you will, um, as being helpful and kind uh, and, and cooperative. And all of those are components of being joyful. So there is a guy I listen to sometimes uh, 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 from India and uh, he's more of a spiritual speaker, talker, explainer of things. You know. So one time he was explaining that life is a journey. You know, you come in uh, wanting things for yourself, take care of yourself, and it, it's kind of a very strange way of explaining it. It's like we are all like animals, you know. Animals do that, like if you take a dog, if you have a dog, you know, eats the same food, wags the tail at the same place, you know, I mean, that's exactly the same thing every day, you know, the whole life. There is no change. Humans are supposed to go from being animalistic life to the life of wisdom. And, and when you achieve that life is, so you start with taking care of yourself and then you get to a point in your life where you don't worry about yourself. Only worry, worry about others, you know, how to take care or help others. Which goes back to your topic today, help. So you go from helping yourself to only helping others. Now that to me is the life to live. <laughs> you know? Right, right. The final part of the research said that, you know, when this sort of things happen, when you build up on your cooperation and your helpfulness and your joyfulness that it um, helps to lay the groundwork for cooperation right. in a community. Right. And it makes perfect sense yeah. just to be able to, um, to help other people out. And community is a good part of what brings us joy. And which brings us to our joy score community as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good topic today. Thank yeah. you. One other final thing while we still have just a couple minutes left and everything was I was talking with um, Dennis the other day and Dennis brought up uh, a very interesting uh, little tidbit talking about um, happiness and um, it can be positive, but it can also be uh, in, in a negative sense. Sometimes uh, people um, need um addictive things to help them be happy. Uh, maybe it's alcohol. Uh, maybe they're so unhappy that in order to get into a happy mindset, um, some sort of a drug or liquor needs to be um, incorporated. Dennis, do you want to expand on that a little bit? Well, I, I just heard an advertisement on television. Um, there's a, a minister, a minister by a guy named Robert Lurie, who, you know, you see him walking on a beach and he's talking about this 
item or another item. And, and he, he started by saying that the most unhappy people in the world are those who are always looking for happiness, you know, uh, looking for happiness somewhere else besides within themselves. Uh, happiness could be, you know, a new home, a fancy home somewhere, a new car, um, a big trip somewhere. Right. All those things indeed make people happy, but real true happiness, by what he was trying to say, it comes from within. And he was talking about happiness in the spiritual sense, the, in terms of religion and, and Christianity. And I found it interesting because a lot of people whom I see who are of the Christian faith, who really practice it day in, day out, they always seem to have a, a, an inner sense of happiness that I don't see in, in other people. It's a philosophy they live by. Right. You know. Uh, just like you were talking about, uh, um, it's better to give than to receive, you know. And so I just thought that was an interesting comment. And it struck me when I heard him. Just to add to what Dennis was saying, you know, this fellow talking about spiritual realities. So... He was talking about happiness, and I've been um, in in trying to understand the difference between happiness and joy. And I believe in explaining things in a simplistic way. What is the difference between? And like Dennis was saying, people find something, or they get a car they want, or whatever. So my way of uh, explaining the difference between happiness and joy is that if you find a hundred dollar bill lying on the sidewalk, you pick it up and you feel happy. But if you take that hundred dollar bill that you found and give it to a homeless guy, that brings you joy. I actually did find a hundred dollar bill yesterday. I really did. In my apartment complex, I was walking and I, I found a hundred dollar bill on the ground. I did not give it to a homeless person. Sorry. <laughs> but that made you happy. Yes, okay. yes. Did you leave a note that said, I found a hundred dollar bill. Is it yours? <laughs> Can you prove it? Just so many apartments. So I just, I didn't know the steps to, to take. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, the, you know, it's a, it is a struggle to understand the difference between happiness and joy. And like Dennis was saying, joy comes from within. You know. In fact, uh, uh, you all know, or well, some of you know, uh, Braden Phillips, you know. So he ran the police department with 1,300 officers. And he's been with Joy School five years now, so one day we were talking, and I said, how early do the kids get incarcerated? He said, they started about 12 years old. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. Yeah. He said, because that's the time. They're looking for joy. And they try to find it in drugs, illicit sex, uh, substance abuse, uh, gangs, crime. And they get in trouble. You know, all they're trying to find is joy. Mm. It's not a crime, but they do criminal stuff. <laughs> right. Right. And that's how life is, you know. I mean, it's hard to believe that a 12 year old could get incarcerated, but mm. they do. But they do. I, I, I think rather than how life is, it's how life has gotten to be for a lot of people. Right. You know, they. They have no alternative. I mean, it's, uh, uh, in one of the discussions, I was, uh, and this came from our psychiatrist, uh, uh, Anne 
wealthy, uh, where she was talking about that it takes about the time a child is seven years old to mature their brain capacity, meaning they're formed uh, and mature by the time they're seven. So between zero and seven, or even nine months before they were born, if the parenting is not appropriate or nurturing, then the child is damaged by the time they're seven already. Hmm. And then they come out, if, if they get incarcerated by the time they're twelve, and then if they go past that stage, you give it to Mr. Zuckerberg with Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and they pick up anxiety and depression. So, I mean, look at it. And to start with, 50% of the kids are born unplanned and unwanted anyway. So look at how big a problem do we have right. coming in the future, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Forget about the way we were born and raised, but, but moving forward, I mean, we have a very high level of depression and anxiety, I'm sure you deal. When I was teaching, I, I dealt with every other student came to me and said, I'm depressed. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Common. You know? Very yes, it is. It is very common. Yeah. I think depression is just part of the human experience, and I think everybody feels it at one time or another. Right. Right. And it's just learning how to cope with it and deal and, and understand it. You know, it's not a forever experience if you choose not to make it. Such. Exactly. Exactly. And it can be a good contrast when you have felt depression and you really can understand joy. Well, if you haven't felt depression, how do you know what joy is? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? You know, they go hand in hand. I mean, right. If you, it's, if you haven't experienced day, I mean night, you won't know what day is like. Yeah. So you have to experience all the emotions which you can experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, on that note, that ends another round of the podcast. We hope you'll keep joining us. Look at all of our previous podcasts that we've done on YouTube. We're on Instagram and we're on X. And TikTok. Yeah, and TikTok. Yeah. yeah, I love our TikToks. Yeah, they are great. So thanks, everybody. And don't forget to help somebody out if somebody asks you for help this week. Yes. yes. Have a great week. Thank you.